is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Good morning, Volusia County. My name is Michael, and you are listening to Volusia Today, your one and only source for local Volusia County news. Better? You, you got that down to the science. Dude, that's tight, right? Hey, and everybody, he's not reading that. He's got that memorized. Like, considering I sat down in this chair about 32 seconds ago, like, that's one of my better ones. <laughs> will somebody write that down? We may have to, Heather, will you go back and watch this again will, and yes, write that down for will, me? And we'll turn it into a little commercial. So then you don't even have to say it. You oh, can that, just, it'll just record that, it. We'll just AI it. Yeah, we <laughs> could do a little, like, a rap. That's what the, just throw, <laughs> throw it into the intro. <laughs> Uh, well, again, good morning. Uh, now that we're done celebrating ourselves, um, I want to introduce you to my, my co-host, Clayton Jackson. Good morning, Clayton. How are you? I am wonderful, Michael. How about you? I, I'm doing okay. Um, I've got friends coming in town, so I've been up like all night cleaning the house. It's great. Heather, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I am all right. <laughs> We've had a stomach virus circling our house. As uh, apparently a lot of Volusia County has, I was talking to a lot of my mom friends and uh, we are not the first, and nor will we probably that. be the last to get this stomach virus. Well, hey, on behalf of everybody else in the studio, thank you for joining in this, this very small studio with no air circulation Listen, this morning. We very much appreciate that. I have washed and Lysoled <laughs> and bleached, so um, everybody out there, wash your hands, soap and water, 20 seconds, and uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. That's the show. We're probably done now. Oh my goodness. So yeah. actually, actually, the weather, it's beautiful outside. It's going to be a, a, an amazing weekend. I can't wait. Yeah. I love this time of year. I love the summer. It's, you know, the reason why we live here in Volusia County. Yeah. I'm so tired of um, the cold weather. Like, I'm, del- I'm cold meaning anything below 70. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm done with it. I'm over it. <laughs> Well, good. Uh, so we've got a bunch of stuff coming up, um, and so some stuff happened this week because it's Volusia County. So, um, actually, Clint, do you want to talk just a few minutes, and I don't even know if it's on our list, do you want to talk just a minute or two about the uh, motocross um, meeting that happened? Yeah, uh, earlier this week, um, down in Port Orange, that their you know, county council, they're exploring a motocross facility. And, you know, to engage the public um, outside of the regular scheduled county council meetings, staff and county council, they held an informational session. There was a lot of boards, a lot of staff there that I think there's about 150 residents that showed up where they could go learn, like, where it'd be potentially located, learn about, you know, pretty much everything that's going on, proposals, you know, what would be the next steps. Where And, you know, the good thing about this was they're actually to talk one-on-one to staff and subject matter experts to kind of right. figure out, hey, you know, what's going on here? Tell me a little bit more about this. So, again, it was very well attended. So we're – but that – that shows how government works right there is you know there's an idea proposed we're going to go to the community where a project could ha- actually happen and what the people who um, around that area to actually come learn more about it and right. you know, give us their feedback too because again that's part of government we want to hear what you have to say about this All right right heather you got you got your motorcycle ready to go uh you know i do love like what clayton was saying that people can come out and yeah. and share what's important to them and i think that's really the message that i i resonated with um i had worked in lake county for a little bit um with a volleyball organization and they kind of did the same thing and were able to build a sand volleyball complex and um this kind of feels the same like a very unique niche sporting thing i love Anything that's going to get the kids out and doing something other than watching TV and playing right. video games. So I think I, it's cool. It really is, Clayton, like you talked about, and you just talked about the volleyball too. It really is local government at its finest, right? And it's super easy for all of us to just kind of sit at home and, you know, complain and, you know, get on the internet and Facebook and whatever it is and just c- complain and voice our opinion. But this really is the opportunity to go down and, and have your voice be heard, or it was the opportunity. Um, it's not, the, the process is, is just beginning, so there's gonna be more. Um, but it really is the, the chance for you to go down and express um, your support or your concerns and ask questions. Um, and I, if I remember right, I think there are two options. One would be um, a motocross facility that was completely built and operated by uh, Volusia County. And option B, or A, I forget which one it was, would be um, one that was built by Volusia County but contracted out for the, for the operation of it because obviously Volusia County is not necessarily in the business of running motocross tracks. 
So there are a couple different funding options out there. Um, and I know that the location at this point is proposed. It's just being considered. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that there are not other locations out there. Um, and at this point, again, that was the very beginning of the process. Um, so that doesn't even mean it's going to happen at this point. There will be other opportunities to participate. So if it does come to fruition, do I have your permission to strap a GoPro on the helmet oh, and go yeah, out there? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, I don't know if risk management's going to like that. Risk uh, yourself. So we, we just won't tell them. <laughs> I love that it. is not Clayton. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Something's wrong with today. I'm pretty a pretty by the book guy. <laughs> that is so true. That so is yeah, so true. I think if you're interested, I'm assuming it'll go back to council for some type of discussion. It will. Um, well, and, and I'm glad you asked. Like the um, the reason we ended up to this point, it, it went to the council for just a very first look. Um, we um, hired a consultant to come in and look at a couple different options for us and provide a uh, a report on what that could look like. And that basically was the beginning of the process for us to go out and start looking at locations um, and, you know, consider funding options and, you know, see if the community, you know, what kind of support is out there. Yeah, I know we posted something about that meeting on our Facebook and it's received a lot of conversation back and forth, both sides of, the, of it. So I feel like, you know, if it is something that you're interested in, this is a perfect time, like you said, to tap into your local government to yeah. express any thoughts you have. I tell you what, I, I, don't, I don't know, Heather, if you were at the meeting, the board meeting, but it was well attended by the the motocross community, if you will. I was watching it on YouTube, and I think I remember seeing some young people that were oh, like, yeah. this is so important to our lives and who we are as people. And I, I think that's special because I'm you know, very into sports and what it can do is yeah. for your personal character and your life so they were very passionate about their sport and um and made some very very good arguments in support of it um you know and i think um just kind of in general us as a society or community when we think about governments and being involved in sports we think about ball well volleyball we yeah. think about ball fields right yeah. like softball soccer volleyball um that's traditional but more and more governments are getting a little bit outside of that those boundaries and looking at some what i would call alternative sports so anyway, keep an eye on that um, at uh, volusia.org because that, again, is just the beginning of the process. And please let us know what you think about that. Clayton, there is a Hurricane Expo coming up that I think you are probably the expert on. Can you talk about that for a Yes. Minute? Well, before we get into actual Hurricane Expo, the big shebang, as I like calling it, is right now our emergency management division, they actually kicked off their Hurricane Town Hall oh, yeah. style meetings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be six of them. So uh, earlier, earlier this week, they held one at the Delane Library. And... Um, so they're actually going to be doing another one next week um, on May 1st. It's going to be start at 530. It's going to be at the Daytona Beach Regional Library. It's a more intimate opportunity for residents to actually come hear very granular information about preparedness, what they can expect in this, uh, the forecast for this season. And again, um, ask the subject matter experts, our emergency management vision about preparedness, what they need to do. Even as simple things as how would you recommend actually doing sandbags and things like that nature. So it is, um, you know, a little bit more intimate setting. Um, you know, again, there's going to be one May 1st. Go to our um, website, our Facebook page. There's, there's going to be six in total, all spread out through the county at the regional libraries. Um, talked to Quint Meekham, the emergency management director, the other day. There's a possibility of maybe doing a virtual one or more locations. That's a great idea. Oh, cool. So just the town hall meetings. But then what Michael said, on Saturday, May 4th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the fairgrounds, that's the Hurricane Expo. And we've not been able to have one since 2019 because COVID-19 happened. But it's back. Um, I actually went to the one in 2019. There were, they estimated about 1,500 people showed up. Wow. Yo, know, it's, it's, it's a big to-do. It, it, it blew my mind wow. how many people come. And it was great. It was wonderful support. We're going to have about 50-something vendors there talking about um, – you know how to prepare your home hurricane shutters home inspections there's going to be like our transform 386 our community assistance division because there are still some people out there still recovering from the most recent hurricanes so you can learn about the different types of assistance there there's going to be guest speakers uh, just a lot of thing and again free food and drinks or there will be hot dogs things Sold. like that so all right. Sold. <laughs> 
Hot so dogs. you're packing your 19 kids in that car, <laughs> aren't you? Get in the hot dog. Mama's got some free lunch. A hurricane hot dog coming up. <laughs> so again, it's it's free to attend. Um, you know, actually earlier this week, there's a, a little disturbance already out there. I saw that. So saw a little X. Yep. Little, so get out of here. so this is that time. You know, to start switching our minds into hurricane preparedness, hurricane readiness. I will never apologize for this, but I'm always going to plug in. This is a time to look into flood insurance. Again, please yeah. don't wait until you see in the news that there's a storm coming. Then you call your insurance agent and say, hey, yeah, let's throw on a flood insurance policy on my homeowners. Yeah. Don't do that because they'll probably say, yeah, that's cool. It's going to be X amount of dollars, but it doesn't go into effect for 30 days. Right. So don't wait. It, yeah, it's weird to have that conversation when it's so beautiful and it just now turned warm, right? But like you said, there there is already something churning out in the Atlantic that everybody's kind of keeping you know, an eye I'm, on. I'm not a weather expert, but yeah. from what I've been reading, we're expecting a, an above average year. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. Don't they say that every year? They do. Like they say that every year, and I, you know, I didn't. Know, I just read last night. I always think of hurricane season starting on uh, June one. And um, the National Weather Service actually starts doing their reports, their daily reports, on May 15th. And so they've actually started a little bit earlier um, because stuff, like you said, stuff does happen out there. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, let's take a break and we'll come back and talk uh, probably a little bit more about hurricanes. Subscribe to the Volusia County YouTube channel. And hit the bell icon to know what's happening in your hometown. There are so many great places to explore. And things to learn. With over 1,000 videos available right now, the channel offers something for everyone. Let's go! Did you know we have countless features showcasing history, nature, wildlife, and recreation? Subscribe! And hit the bell icon. Or that we live stream important county meetings and workshops where leaders make decisions that can impact our everyday lives. Did you subscribe yet? Or that we record our weekly radio show, Volusia Today, where we interview staff from the different divisions and departments across our great county, and they discuss the nitty gritty of their field and expertise. Go ahead, subscribe. But that's not it. There's more. Subscribe and hit the bell icon and fully explore. Score. Good morning, Volusia County. You are listening to uh, Volusia today, and uh, we were just uh, talking about hurricanes, Heather, and uh, hurricane season is about to start. Sure is. Coming up. Right around the corner. Uh, it's interesting. We uh, we had a community meeting last night. Actually, our um, deputy county manager, uh, Suzanne, and Jessica, our coastal engineer, spoke to, I think it was the League of Women Voters last night, okay. um, about actually hurricane recovery. So it's weird. We're kind of at this crossroads heading into the next hurricane season. And a lot of people don't realize we're still recovering from two hurricane seasons ago mm -hmm. um, when we had two different hurricanes kind of back to back. So last night they uh, gave a, I think, a couple hour presentation talking about, it was all about beach restoration. Um, and we are kicking off a process, Clayton, where we're going to look at the entire coastline and do some sort of feasibility study on it and to look at, you know, what do we want our beach to look like? And um, each individual community, you know, has different preferences. You know, what, what, they, what they want in Daytona Beach may be a little different than they want in New Smyrna Beach, mm -hmm. maybe a lot different. Um, so we're talking to each different community, and we're going to do a feasibility study up and down the coastline to figure out uh, what are the best solutions for each beach. Yeah. Um, that could be higher dunes, more sand, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, and, of course, all of that stuff comes, you know, attached with um, the funding challenges because it's because it's not cheap to put sand on the beach. No. So anyway, that's um, that was a big thing that happened last night. Um, and it's going to be an ongoing process. Clayton, we were talking a little bit off the air about um, there will be a public participation process in that mm -hmm. where we will have a survey or two maybe at some point um, where the residents and business owners can um, – can chime in and give us their opinion on what what they want the beach to look like and what they think the benefits are and you know is it worth investing and how much and all that stuff. Yeah, and I'm glad you said because like I said, this isn't a one size fits all approach up and down our 47 miles of coast line. Right. We said you know there are different factors to play for each community. Um, you know the the type of sand, the way it's laid out, as well as the culture within a community, you know, varies, you know, greatly. Yeah. You know, Volusia County is not just one, you know, demographic culture across, you know, everywhere. 
there's different settings, different communities, yep. and that's why we want to listen to every community. What do you all want it to look like? And that's right. what we're going to listen to. And, and well, in addition to the, because because we do want to hear from the residents who live there and what do they want their beach to look like. But the beaches for Volusia County in particular are such a strong economic driver mm-hmm. that we really want to hear from the business community too. Um, and I forget the stat. I was just looking at the stats yesterday, but um, the, the, the tourism industry in Volusia is the second largest industry. Um, supports somewhere around 16, 17 percent of the entire workforce. That's big. Yeah. Um, a lot of people um, depend on the, the vitality and, and the, the life that comes um, to life on the beaches for their livelihood, whether that be a hotel, a restaurant, um, the entertainment industry, whatever it is. So um, anyway, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on volusia.org. That, again, is going to be a long process. Um, there, we're kicking off the process now, and I think we're looking for a report in about a year that uh, will help us kind of understand what we're going to do. In the meantime, we're also, uh, actually, we, we as in Volusia County just returned from um, Washington, and we met with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, actually the Office of Management and Budget to talk about funding and stuff to look at beach renourishment and beach replenishment on our beaches. Stand. Well, as a, a West Side resident, uh, I yeah. love all of this. And I love, you know, we get to choose which one we go to. You know, we don't just go to the one that's closest to us. But it is kind of like, point, yeah. what's mm-hmm. the what's the flavor of the day? Do we want, like, the new Smyrna feel where we can get ice cream? Or do we want the Ormond where it's a little bit more remote and we're not surrounded by all these things? So it is cool as someone who's not on the beach side to, to see all the different beach communities and what, you know, yeah. what we like. And we like all of it for all different reasons. So. You know, that's a really good point because I think we have a lot of discussion about east side and west side, and and sometimes um, those discussions can can kind of almost be territorial a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, a lot of times we hear the the opinion that people on the west side don't care about the beaches, and I think that's absolutely not true. I think it Heather is. goes to the beach more than we do. Yeah, and we probably. live east we side, do. <laughs> and uh, we love it, and it's a reason why we live here. And I very much so pay my taxes. And I love that beach. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, spoken like a true Volusia County resident. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, let's uh, head back into one more break and we'll come back and talk about um, actually more beach stuff, probably. We are Volusia County Beach Safety. We're here to serve Volusia County's 47 miles of unique coastline. You know, Volusia County beaches. Yeah, those beaches but also these beaches. We have millions of visitors every year and we work around the clock to keep our beaches safe and beautiful. And you can help. Swim near a staff lifeguard tower. Pick up your trash. And fill holes. Identify, avoid, and escape rip currents. Please leave the beach cleaner than you found it. Look out for one another and keep an eye on kids, especially in the traffic lane and in the water. Pets are allowed at our two pet-friendly beaches, Lighthouse Point Park and Smyrna Dunes Park. If you see something, say something. A clean and safe beach guarantees fun in the sun for everyone. Thank you for doing your part to keep Volusia County beaches beautiful. See you at the beach! Make the most of your day at the beach. Download the Volusia County Beaches app today. Sign up for real-time notifications on vehicle ramp openings and closings. Find staff lifeguard towers. Get updates on tides and beach conditions. Plus, off-beach parking and coastal parks info. Volusia County Beaches app is available for your smart devices at the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back to Volusia Today. This is Clayton Jackson along with my host Michael Ryan and fellow co-host Heather Belden. So kind of piggyback on the beach thing. Just, uh, if you are looking to check out the beach during this lovely weekend with projected beautiful weather, just a couple of things. Just let everybody know that the Tide Street Beach Access Point down to New Smyrna Beach, it is temporarily closed. It's going to be closed for about three months. We're actually going to do some uh, rehabilitation construction on it. 
Um, but you can, if you're looking down, go that way, the Cortez Street Pedestrian Access Point is open. That's a good alternative use. And also, um, you can get to it this weekend, but starting Monday, April 29th, the Minerva Beach Ramp will also close. And it's going to be, the ramp is going to be um, going under some construction, and uh, it should be a few-week process, so we should have that reopened by the end of next month at the latest. Okay. The weather dependent. I always got to throw that, that disclaimer in there. So um, if you are headed down that way, you're looking for how to get on the beach, always download the Volusia Beaches app. I think I, I, I plug the Volusia Beaches app every show. Almost as much but, as you do flood insurance. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, the two important things people need to know about. It's so good, though. And it's not just for closures for repairs. They do them, like, to the minute for um, tides. And I find yeah. that that's really important because I have no idea when the tides are. I oh, I think when I was younger, I used to think, like, oh, high tides at a certain time no not true at all yeah it's random and like you have no idea and that's the worst place to be is on the beach and the high tide's there and you're like scattering to get all your stuff <laughs> yeah you're like oh no my towel's underwater yeah. now mm-hmm. so um love it. and and also it's a good resource to find where lifeguards will be staffed that day which now as a mom like 100% the most important thing for me. Like, we will be swimming in front of a staff lifeguard tower no matter what. Well, Heather, speaking of lifeguards, there are uh, tryouts coming up. You can be a lifeguard. Me? Yeah. Wow. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> um, yeah, and we love our our Volusia Beach uh, rescue team. And uh, like you said, they are looking for more. I think they have a handful May 18th in Ormond, May 25th in Port Orange, and June 1st in Edgewater. And if you're, uh, if you know someone who is uh, 16 or older on June 1st, that would be anywhere interested. This is such a cool opportunity. I wish I would have thought about this. I went the other Volusia County route when I was that age and was a summer camp counselor. And I'm kind of kicking myself because I think I would have, one, been paid more, two, been <laughs> able to enjoy my summer a little yeah. bit more. Because uh, the summer camp counselor route was a, was. Bro, that's, that, a that's a lot of work. That Although, is a lot of I do work. think a lifeguard also is probably a lot of work. But what, what was your favorite memory as a summer camp counselor in Volusia County? Meeting my husband, but everyone knows that story. Um, I enjoyed, let's see, the field trip at the Daytona Lagoon. That was always a fun one because it's not like a huge yeah. park. And so when you have 10 kids that you're responsible for, um, it's much more manageable than uh, Wet and Wild, which rest in peace, Wet and Wild, the uh, bigger rest one, in peace, yes. bigger water park in Orlando. So I would say that um, we used to go to Deleon Springs, which all the kids thought was cool, and again, like a very contained space to yeah. watch your ten kids, but still like get out of the run of the mill, hanging back out at the Gemini Spring House. Wait, do you parent now the same way you were a camp counselor? Oh man! Just worrying about just question. worry about containing them all the time. Yeah, actually, I do remember at like 18 years old thinking like I care way too much about these kids, and mm-hmm. like I was one of the counselors that was constantly like counting my kids and making sure I had all of them. And I remember yeah. being next to other counselors who were a little bit more laid back in their approach, and I'm like, you know, where are your kids? And they're like, oh, they're they're here. I know. And I'm like, but do you can you see all of them? And I remember the panic of, like, when you bring 10 kids on a ride. Yeah. So I walk 10 kids up to the top of a slide. And then who goes down first? Me? And leave 10. <laughs> right, right. Or do you get down there away? Or 10 down and I have to Yeah. Wait. So we, I always had to, like, try to find someone who, like, okay, you go down first and you collect all of them and I'll stay here until the last one goes down. But it's like... Those are the, I guess, it's kind of the same things I still think about as a mom now. Wow, I was like the complete opposite as a, I was the worst camp counselor ever. <laughs> and like I literally fell asleep on the lifeguard stand one time. Yeah, uh, the true story. And then every chance I got, I would go back to the bunk and like take a nap if I could. And I had no idea where my kids were. It was, uh, <laughs> I was, I was like, complete I worst. I was like an eagle eye. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, where yeah. are my babies? Yeah, no, not me. I just I gave them snacks and told them to watch TV as much as I could. Well, I do <laughs> that now as a parent sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's that's an actual strategy, isn't it? I tell you what, let's do our uh, last break, and then we'll come back and wrap it up for the day. Looking to earn income and serve your community? Votran is now hiring and has a variety of career opportunities. Plus, Votran is offering a $1,000 hiring bonus and paid training for select positions. For a full list of job openings and to apply online, visit Votran.org. That's Votran.org. 
Next stop, Occupation Station. Gotta go. Driver, this is my stop. You can access Volusia County government online at volusia.org. Listen to county council meetings, pay for permits or tags, or search the property appraisers databases. Volusia.org is your Volusia County government information resource. Welcome back to Volusia Today. We are your Volusia County community information team. My name is Heather, joined by our co-host Michael and co-host Clayton. Um, Just a couple little reminders here. Um, if you are interested, a really cool thing is coming to the Ocean Center. You've heard us talk about it before, but on April 30th, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming to the Ocean yeah, Center. Dude, I'm so stoked. Yeah, I it's so wait. cool. I went when I was in college, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. I would imagine if you have kids that are kind of in that sports mindset yeah. right now, they would think it's really cool. You can take your kids, Clayton? I'm going to try to. Yeah. I don't know what uh, there's been some rainouts for soccer and t-ball, so I oh, don't know. Uh, it rains. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we may have been uh, makeup games, well, so I'm not for sure. Kind of come that end of the season. If where, it rains yeah. again, basketball is an indoor sport, so you can enjoy it. Yes, we can. Um, <laughs> some other updates. April 30th, there was a county council workshop that has been postponed. And for those West Siders that are listening, Lake Beersford Park will be temporarily closed. Um, from sunrise until the early afternoon, we have some training with our friends over at FDOT and SunRail. Um, there will be some emergency personnel, vehicles, law enforcement, some sirens. Uh, there will be some signage there to notify you if you are thinking about going to that park to uh, maybe go find a better park for that day because of this training. But again, May 1st, Lake Beersford Park in Deland. Heather, thank you very much for telling us about that. What, and what kind of training is it, real quick? So it's a partnership with uh, the Florida Department of Transportation, SunRail, a bunch of different law enforcement agencies. I think some of the local PDs and fire departments, mm-hmm. Volusia County, will have our fire rescue team, emergency management. That's EMS, gonna be a big show. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of uh, parties involved. A really cool opportunity for those folks to get some training in. That's not your everyday instance, yeah. but to be prepared in the event of something like that. So nice. Yeah. Nice. To, and before we go, I have to um, let everybody know that we are announcing a permit and code concierge service today. I practiced that word all week, Heather. Concierge. Yeah. yeah I don't even know if I got it right. Um, that it's a brand new service for Volusia County that we want to um, help everybody. If you're navigating the uh, code or permit system, but sometimes when you don't work in government, Clayton, you don't really know some of the nuances. And it's nice to just have a helping hand and somebody to guide you through the process. Um, I went, I actually worked in development for a while, and I found out how hard it was to be on the outside of the processes we all mm-hmm. kind of take for granted. So that's launching today. And um, it's free. And it is free. free. Volusia.org. Um, and really, they're just there to help you. So check it out. Um, Heather, have a great weekend. Are you going to get outside? <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. We've yeah. got some T-ball birthday parties, as usual. Birthday yeah. parties every weekend. I know. <laughs> I, um, and we, we heated the pool for the last two days, which my wife is super unhappy about. But, but we've heated the pool because um, we're not quite there yet, and we're going to spin it outside. Have a good weekend.